qualified, professional, and compassionate doctors talking real solutions to real health problems. Tuberculosis is one of the top 10 killer diseases worldwide. In Uganda, about 1 in 500 people will suffer from TB. And of the people who have TB, we shall lose about 30% of these people. With me in studios are TB experts, Dr. Baluku Joseph from Mulago Hospital, the National TB Program, and Dr. Philip Gothard from the University College of London Hospitals. You're welcome, doctors, to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I am your host for the evening, Dr. Darius Wachi, and you're listening to the Doc Talk Show. So let's get started in understanding more about this infection called tuberculosis. So I'll start, Dr. Baluku Joseph. Uh, you, you have you've worked in the National TB program, so you have lots of experience in this disease. Could you help the people understand exactly what, what is TB? So tuberculosis is, uh, to be specific, is an infection, a small, tiny bug that often affects the lungs. And uh, in the majority of people, they will breathe in this bug through the air, and then it will go into the lungs. It, two things will happen. Either the bug will sit there without causing any problem, mm -hmm. and after some years in some people, that bug will become live again, and then it causes severe disease. That's okay. the minority of the patients. I mean, that's the minority of patients. Okay. Uh, in some patients, about 10% of patients, once they get the bug, they will get the disease there and then. And so this bug, whereas it commonly affects the lungs, in some cases, it can affect any other organ of the body. And that, that includes the brain, includes the skin, includes any organ of the body, including the, the, yeah. the genitourinary system. Okay. So, um, Dr. Phil, you have lots of experience working in Africa, and I'm sure you've, come, you've had the opportunity, opportunity to compare um, the health systems within Africa to health systems in the UK. Um, how common is TB here? Maybe you can give us a comparison mm. how common it is here to the UK. Mm. To sort of to get a perspective of what No, it's sure. Like. Um, well, TB is actually quite uncommon in both places. So here in Uganda, if you take 500 people each year, only one person will develop TB. Um, whereas back in the UK, that's around one in 10,000. So there's a difference of 20 times more here in Uganda and other parts of East Africa. Okay. So it's uh, not, not too much of a big problem, is it? We well, it's a big problem to the people who have it. Um, but the difficulty is if you have a condition that's quite uncommon, then spotting it can be tricky for the doctors and nurses. And so part of the challenge is how both patients and doctors can pick those few people who do have TB uh, from the many people who don't. Okay. Uh, Dr. Baluku. Yeah, uh, but, but you see, Darius, think the other perspective to yes. look at it is, is that while we know that a third of the world population has TB in their lungs, sitting there quiescent, doing nothing, when you come to countries like Uganda, probably the number is bigger. You may find uh, we have no clear specifics um, and statistics on how many people have the TB germ quiet in their lungs, doing nothing, waiting for that opportune moment to become disease. We do not have that statistic. But it is probably more than two-thirds of Ugandans have the TB infection in their lungs, doing nothing, but they do not have TB, the disease. Mm. Okay. And so that becomes a very big burden yes. for us as a country. What, what does it mean? How is it possible that the, the germ will sit in the lungs and do nothing? So all of us have a, 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 an immune system, a very uh, complex set of cells and small, small molecules in our body. And what this immune system does is to rally itself and fight this germ. So 90% of the time, if I breathed in the TB germ today, my immune cells will come and they will assemble around this TB germ and keep it there without spreading anywhere. So but it, in, it won't cause any problems. So it won't so cause any problem. Dormant. It will be there dormant, doing nothing. Okay. Waiting for some opportune moment when probably my immune system will be weak and it will spread out the rest of my body. And cause the actual disease. And then cause TB as people know it. But the bug is usually there 
in the majority of people, especially in our developing countries. Okay. So if someone gets this TB disease, um, let's assume it is not, the bug has now become active, it has become strong in the body. How many people would recover from it? How many people would die? Do you have any idea? So in Uganda, uh, when TB is treated, number one, TB is quite treated, as we shall be discussing. When P TB is treated, about 80% of our people will be completely cured. If it is treated. If it is treated. Uh, but the science shows that if you followed up these patients and uh, they are not treated, uh, probably by about f but at, at, at five years later and people, somebody is not treated, they have a 90% chance that they will die of TB. Five yeah. years from now if they are not So treated. TB is uh, very preventable and is treatable, but if you do not get this disease checked and treated, a very high likelihood it might uh, lead someone, unfortunately, to their grave. Dr. Phil, would you also agree with that? No, I, th I think that's true and it's a really important point to make because um, what that means is that we need to find people who have TB. Who have TB and put them on the treatment. For two reasons. Firstly, to put them on the treatment so they get better. But also, the sooner we find people, the quicker we are at preventing the spread of TB throughout the community. And so we have a public health impact as well as a personal impact on the patient. Are there particular risk groups of people who are at risk of getting TB? Uh, Dr. Phil, do you think uh, well, some that, people who you might have observed at risk of getting TB much more than others? Mm. I'm going to take that one step back, if I may. So, a hundred years ago in the UK, TB rates were the same as they are here in Uganda today. Okay. Um, so, this is not a feature of being in a tropical environment. It's a feature of um, a variety of factors around nutrition, uh, overcrowding, um, access to care, the ability to um, isolate or contain people who have active disease and stop the spread of TB, and that you can complete treatment so that people don't go on spreading in a community. So the factors that lead to different levels of TB in, in different countries uh, is quite complex. Okay. But hidden within that are some clues as to which groups may be more at risk of TB than others. And uh, do you know some of these groups? Yeah. So, some of the most vulnerable are very young children. And Joseph's spoken about um, how many of us carry TB inside us with no trouble at all for much of our lives. And then at some point, as our immune system weakens, the TB becomes active. And that's the case in adults, but for young children, it's much more common that once you breathe in the TB, it will progress to active disease in quite a large number and so the preschool children will be, perhaps a third of them will, progress to active TB. Um, and if you look at society as a whole, it's a disease primarily of young adult men. Of young adult men. So being a man is also a risk factor? It's, it is a small risk factor, small but of course all of us are at some risk of TB. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dr. Baluk, are there any other people in your experience whom you've observed? So in, tend to get TB. In Uganda, it's important to, to understand that HIV is a major driver of the disease. And about 43% about of TB patients will have HIV. But that also tells you that about 57% uh, of them will not have HIV. So HIV is a very key driver of, of, of TB. Uh, number two is people who have weak immune systems like people of diabetes, at uh, high risk for tuberculosis, you find that people who are in prisons because, as Dr. Phil said, overcrowding are at high risk of getting tuberculosis, and then smoking and alcohol use. Those are the commonest risk factors in Uganda. Leave alone the other things that can cause the immune system to become weak, like certain drugs and cancers. But by and large, the key things in Uganda are HIV and these other behavioral lifestyle uh, behaviors that people engage in. Okay. So, uh, young children, and uh, HIV, HIV positive, positive but you said half it can affect whether HIV positive or HIV negative can exactly. still affect you. Exactly. But HIV tends to propagate the infection a lot more. Okay. But also they're very old because the immune system is, is getting old. So they're also at risk of getting tuberculosis just like the very young. Uh, Dr. Phil, mm. how, how exactly is TB, how does one get TB? This deadly disease, this deadly bug? <laughs> so TB is transmitted through droplet infection. If you cough, 
and you have TB in your lungs, then in the droplets of cough will be the TB bugs. And those bugs will hang in the air with the droplets and last for some good length of time. So if you're in the space around someone who's coughing and has TB, then over time you're at risk of catching that TB. We tend to say if you spent uh, eight hours or a period overnight, then that's a significant risk. But these are hard things to quantify. It's passed on by coughing and it enters the other person's lung and then disseminates through their bodies. Okay. So uh, we'll be back after the commercial break. Remember, you can send in your questions, your feedback, your comments on the social media platforms. You are watching the Doc Talk show. And uh, uh, remember, it's a discussion on TB, a very important topic, a very important uh, public health burden disease. So it's always important to learn more about TB, how it can be prevented and how it can be treated. You are watching the Doc Talk show.